Welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Duncan, Duncan Keel, and um, I'm from a company called the UPP Group. And basically, UPP Group stands for Unlocking People's Potential. And in this case, it's Unlocking Plumbers' Potential. And um, basically, um, that's what we do in our business. So I'll give you a little bit of a story later on on what we really, really do. And obviously, a couple of years ago, we started a company with myself and my wife, Mandy, a company called Coach Up. It's still under the brand of UPP Group, but it's helping our entrepreneurs grow into leaders, people of influence and value. And I think this is what we're talking about today, potentially the growth that we can, we can look at and we can look at the opportunities that are within the industry right now and in the future. Um, so um, the other day I was talking to Brendan from my office, the executive director, and he was explaining to me that most of the plumbers out there um, are very sort of fixed mindset and they have a fixed mindset. And I'm not saying everybody has a fixed mindset, but the opportunity for growth lies in the business opportunities that are available. And a lot of the industry at the moment are mainly talking and doing um, sort of residential sort of fix fit outs in you know, alterations, stuff like that. A lot of uh, maintenance work and a lot of visa and insurance work. And I think that's the majority of the guys what they're doing. And uh, today I just wanted to, to give you a little bit of inspiration, inspire you a little bit and to talk about a journey that is beyond that. And, um, you know, when we say expanding, you know, expanding for me is like an elastic band. You know, if you want growth in your business, you need to stretch yourself, you need to stretch into the different areas. And I'll explain in this talk about how I did that, and I'll give you a journey of where I started. And so let's go back to the beginning. Uh, we started out in 1996. Uh, I'd come back from, I qualified in 94 uh, through Bivsa, and then I went and traveled around the world for three years working as a plumber, qualified. So I left my company that I did my apprenticeship company called Unity Plumbers in Germiston. And we used to do a lot of work for Randwater. We used to do high rises, complexes, um, you know, quite intricate plumbing, big construction stuff. And obviously I learned quite a bit there. Um, basically came back from overseas and then started working uh, for myself as a plumber, you know, with a bucky and obviously a bit of tools. And that's how I, you know, that's how I started. And I think that's how we all start. And obviously, we were called under pressure plumbing, but we grew and we grew. And at essentially one stage, we had about 18 buckies on the road and we had about 250 staff. And we used to do, we started off as maintenance, obviously, and uh, we grew from that. And then obviously, in 2018, we uh, changed our name because we were doing multiple different things. And obviously, that's where the group came out. And obviously, now, we didn't have just focused on plumbing. We had focused on so many other things within our group. And that's where Coach App was born in, in 2020, 2021, sorry. And then obviously in that same year, I started moving out into, into the industry. You know, I was one of those plumbers that didn't think that IOPSA or PRB or anything else was relevant to me. And that's what I did. I moved into that, that sphere. And obviously uh, last year in 2022, um, I was given the award of being a master plumber. And obviously, many, many years of experience have culminated to becoming that. And now my role in the industry is, you know, within IOPSA, PRB, and master plumber. And a master plumber is, is there to give back, and is, is there to help the next generation. And I think that's what the journey was in the beginning to where we are right now. So what are the kind of things that we used to do at Under Pressure? And let me tell you, we started with the maintenance. Like most of you guys, you start off with maintenance, residential maintenance. And you move on doing all sorts of types of maintenance, from block drains to geysers to residential. And then eventually what you do is that elastic band starts to stretch. And I think you need to have that, have that mindset that, um, you know, a plumber is an artist. A plumber is an artist. And when you understand that, you realize that you are more than what you are, but that you think you are. And the journey from getting out of your residential to into more commercial, industrial, takes a bit of um, exposure. You've got to get into different places. You've got to learn how to get there. And obviously, work comes your way. But you know with plumbing is people have emergencies. And obviously, people need to 
get things done. So typically what we used to do is, is little maintenance problems. I get a call for an industrial job and the guy says, can you do it? And I say, obviously I can do it. And then you get into the job. And generally what happens is you have to become an entrepreneur very fast. And you have to learn the skill of not knowing how to do something, but learning through the project how to do it. And if, if I had what I have now and the kind of people around me, it would be a lot easier. But in those days, I didn't. So we had to obviously figure out, I had to research, I had to learn. And obviously, I had to get suppliers that were professionals within the product around me at the same time. I think that's how we used to build into bigger jobs, into bigger stuff. And that's how we got into construction. And we went from residential to commercial to industrial, started doing a lot of box gutters, started getting involved in civils. So when I say civils, I mean, like before you do a complex, there's going to be drainage, there's going to be sewer lines, there's going to be water lines, and then there's obviously the inspection of that, and stormwater. So the big concrete, 450, 600, you know. And, and we got into civils, so we would do all the civils portions of it before the plumbers came in and started you know, putting uh, pipes and stuff for the houses. We ventured from that into horizontal drilling, where we would drill under the roads. We would do certain things like, um, we call them Section 38s, um, and where you're moving for the council, you're moving a manhole from one side of the road to the other side, or a water connection from one side to the other. And I had to learn that sort of stuff. So you see how this involvement, this growth starts to happen as you move into different areas. And I think, we used to call ourselves under pressure right up until 2018. And I was always under pressure. I was always under pressure with a client or a big project, or money not coming in, whatever. And we realized that, you know, I can't live like this. I can't be under pressure all the time. So what happened is we moved into different types of specialized stuff. So utility mapping. So we would offer our clients, you know, as built drawings where we would map out all the plumbing. So lines, sewers, sewer stuff like that we use cameras, we use actual mapping machines, radar machines. And then obviously clients would come to us and say, you know, I don't have drawings, especially big commercial guys. I don't have drawings of the building. This facility guy's left and he's, and he's thrown all the drawings away and stuff like that. And that's what we did and that's how we grew. And as you listen to what I'm saying, these are opportunities that lie within your, your own company and opportunities that you can get into. And it means that I'll, I'll explain a little bit how we can help you, but these are the type of things you can get into. So there's obviously camera work, there's jetting, relining, leak detection, so many different areas that guys have specialized in. But for me, is obviously the, the journey is on under pressure to coach up. So think about all the things that I'm learning now. But now, as I become a coach, look at the things I can coach people on and show them and know about those. So we moved on from... Council upgrades, we moved into, I used to work with a lot of engineers, taking water mains from one place to the next, adding on to communities where they didn't have water. Um, we moved into schools, shopping centers, hospitals, warehouses. I mean, our construction just grew. And obviously, we were just, with construction comes obviously a lot of experience, and you're dealing with wet engineers, engineers, architects, stuff like that. So your, your, your skill grows quite immensely. Obviously, in 2018, I was actually around 2016, 2017, one of the big companies, commercial companies I started working for, they asked me to move in a sustainability direction, thinking about water, thinking about, you know, the future of water, which I'd never even thought of. Um, I think for me, it was a passion for, for you know, if you look at the, the, the UPP, and basically what came out is you look at the U, and you look at the, the U is upside down, and that's like an umbrella. It's an umbrella. What do you use an umbrella for? Normally to, to, to shade you from the rain. But if you look at the U now, it's catching rain. And it's basically turning water into something that we can use. And think about it, guys, is that in the future, when there is no water, how can you turn? And I think that is the thing, that is the big question we need to ask ourselves today is, is that if you're going to start looking at new opportunities, start looking in the water. Look into the areas that can actually completely different to what you're doing, re residential, diesel work insurance, and alterations, stuff like that. And a lot of your work is getting lost from guys standing outside on the side of the roads, holding up signs, saying that they're plumbers, and stuff like that, which they actually don't, they're not plumbers, guys. And I think you are the core 
of the guys around you that need to be known and recognized. And that's where we talk about value because you have a value in this. And this is where we need to be going. This is the future. And let me tell you something now. No one's going to be standing outside on the side of the roads holding up a sign that says that I do filtration because I doubt any single person out there is going to want to have an unexperienced person dealing with their filtration, their water that they drink. So think about it like that. Think about how special this industry is and think about how you guys can move in this direction. So in the, in the, in the new world of plumbing and in the new world of water, there are so many different things that you can do. So think about rainwater, think about smart metering, think about backups, think about filtration, think about water treatment plants, think about RO, the return of investments. Think about, uh, we've just finished a project, we've done a number of projects like this, where we drill boreholes, we extract the water, we design the project uh, from the beginning, feasibility studies, we do risk assessment, we go into drilling the water, we extract the water, we test the water, we filter the water, we pump it into into tanks, through settling tanks and, and, and water treatment process, pH correction, AFMs, all of that, settlings, and then basically into storage, which is the client can have an option of municipality or boil water, and added to that, they can have also rain. So think about all the industrial sites that you've got, think about shopping centers, think about all the areas that you can collect rainwater, and you'll start to see that you can have a love for water. Every time water's flowing underground, you know, it comes from boreholes, it comes from roofs, and it comes from municipality. Those are your four sources. Now start looking at those four sources and seeing how you can change the way you think about where they come from. And now you get a new sort of inspiration to life. And let me tell you, it can be residential, commercial, whatever it is, there are areas in, in plumbing that you can tap into those areas. All right, so let's move on. And yeah, so as we progressed through into this new water world, we call it, we started Obviously, women in plumbing in 2021. So we in, we've employed three women apprentices that are in their second years and obviously doing really, really well. So we've got some apprentices from the Tibet colleges and we've got some apprentices from Blue Beaver. And we've made those partnerships and I think they're growing right really nicely. But obviously, with Mandy being a woman in, in an owner of this business, she is very involved in PRB and APSA and getting involved in Coach Up and obviously helping me behind the scenes of master plumbing. And I think that's the journey that I've taken, is to become that coach, become that consultant, become that empowerer. And obviously, through Coach Up, what's happened now is that we coach businesses. We coach them through a process where we get them exposed into work. So currently, I'm working with about three different companies where we, um, on one project, where we're looking at a big heat pump system for a whole building. And basically, we've got three different guys working on the project. So obviously, what I do is I coach the guys, get them involved in the project. They learn from being a residential heat pump specialist maintenance. They grow into commercial. And obviously, I have someone that is more like an engineer type of guy, and he, he works with them. So he teaches the engineering side. And obviously, the guys um, that are plumbers learn to upskill themselves and to grow. So in our coach up business, we have about, at the moment, nine or ten companies that I am coaching weekly and fortnightly. And these are all young young and old plumbers. I've got guys that are over their 50s, I've got guys that are 23, 24, brand new in business. But the area is what we've done now is that so every three months we get together and we talk about the challenges within the industry. But we also have a network of guys. And, you know, the, the way that we want to build the industry is to be able to network with guys. So a lot of the guys out there, some of the older guys, you can grab a few youngsters around you, you can get guys around you, and you can start working together within plumbing. Because normally what happens, all plumbers work for themselves, and that's what they do. But think about now working with three or four other plumbers within a project. And, you know, in the building industry, they've been doing it for years, man. You call it joint ventures. You know, you always used to have Murray and Roberts dealing with another guy, and they'd have these joint ventures going. But it's like getting your, your resources and your skills, putting it together and helping each other to grow. And also what's nice about it is because plumbing is very lonely. You normally work on your own. You're a business owner on your own. You need to have someone around you that is that can also give you ideas and challenges and basically empowering. So in Coach Up, what we do is we, we teach the entrepreneurial journey. So EOS is an entrepreneurial operating system. 
And we use that. So we teach you about vision and value. We talk to you about processes. We teach you how to hire people. We teach you how to run your business from a budget perspective. So we use things like we call DBM, design, budget, meta statement. We teach you all of those things. We teach you how to cost jobs. And obviously, from the beginning, how to design it, get it, get it into a drawing so that you can now give it to the guys on site so that they understand. And this whole flow through process happens. And that's what I love about what we do right now is, is that we get to experience project after project with team, team after team. And also we are building, building the future of the industry through the empowerment method. And as a master plumber, obviously this year I had to write my thesis and my thesis was on leadership. And in leadership, um, let me just move to the next stage. In my, in my thesis, I was talking about all the things that I believe the industry need to change. And I was talking about leadership. How do I lead the guys through to the next generation? And, and the way we do it is through, is through all these things I've been talking about, rainwater, boreholes. I mean, boreholes are an amazing opportunity. Filtration. I mean, if you think about filtration right now, some of the stuff that I'm doing, I'm doing AMD, which is acid mine drainage. I mean, from a plumber to where I am right now is such an opportunity, but it's because I've had to change my mindset. I've had to get into that growth mindset and believe that I can get into these areas. And the way that we do it is perfect. It's the way that, you know, through Coach Up, we get the guys involved in these type of things and they come onto site and they, their eyes are open. Some of the older guys, they get their passion back and it's like, they feel like, you know what, nothing's just lost and doom and doom. So that's the, that's the beauty that we have in this industry is that there are so many things that you can choose. And as a coach, I've been through all of them, so, which is nice because I can connect with the guys. I can talk about gas, I can talk about pumps, solar, e-pumps, metering, smart valves, and I've done it all. And what's nice about it is I can connect with them very, very nice. So as a, as a, as a coach, obviously my job is to, through Master Plumber, is to connect with the community. And what we do, we call it the 369. Now, the 369 is on when I bring in a new company for coaching, basically they, the, the first thing is they come for a six-week session and we do a scoping session, 90 minutes, where we, we, we get into the, the, the heart of what they want and what their vision is and where they'd like to go. And then obviously as a coach, my opportunity and my growth is to grow the guys into that. And so we use the 369 process, which is basically I'll work with them for three projects. And then they watch me and I'll show them how to do it. And then the next thing is they work the next three projects, which is the six. They do it and I watch them. And then what we do is the nine, the, the nine, the next three is they, they train someone else and we watch that person. And I think it's the beautiful part of 369 is that the guys understand what empowerment is. So it's like you, you take on someone new and you train. So we are constantly training them. And just think about it, guys, when there is no water, we've got not enough plumbers in this country to be able to deal with it. So we really, really need to advance. We really, really need to talk into the industry. We really, really need to grow new guys. And I think this is the model we can use. And you know what? I, I'm inspired to use this model. It's, it's a model that I'm going to push through as a master plumber. But I want all the other guys out there that are wanting to grow the industry to use this model. And you know what? It's free. It's, it's, a, it's my thesis. I've given it to the industry. And all we need to do is now grow on it. Start to learn how you can incorporate your business by helping other businesses and helping younger guys grow up in the industry. So part of that is guys call upon me to consult. Some of the guys I'm working with at the moment, they call me. And within the network, they come across new jobs. So what happens? No longer are they just thinking about geezers and maintenance. Now they say, okay, Duncan, I've got this hospital and we need some the clients is looking for some backup and they're looking for, let's say, 360,000 liters of water. Now the guy has got this team around him that he knows he can tap into. And he says, wow, you know what? I'm not afraid anymore. I can go and tackle a job like that because I've got the likes of Duncan around me. I've got other guys that are skilled at doing this and this and this. And we pull together as a team and we can deliver the water to the clients and the job. And everybody learns through the process. And that's the beauty of what we find. So obviously, you know, as, as I've grown as a coach and man has grown, we've done speaking events, we do a lot of podcast stuff, we do a lot of talking into the industry. And obviously the vision is, in our company, is, is making a difference in Southern Africa. And it's about sustainable water and it's about 
empowering 100,000 people. And of those 100,000, in the next 10 years, will be 50%, which will be women. And, you know, all I want to say in, in the industry is that, you know, women are, are there and they are a, a big asset to the industry. I think we have to respect that. We have to respect that every single plumber behind every plumber there is always a woman. Is someone either doing the accounts or is someone actually helping within the business? But nowadays, we've got plumbers out there in the field and they are learning and they're women. So I think we have to respect that, we have to honor that, and we have to grow that. And the other way areas that most of us guys as plumbers we don't get involved in is, the, is these last three years, the officer, PRB, and the master plumber. We need to start thinking about aspiring ourselves to be more than what we are now. Instead of just being a red seal, we want to think about being more than that. I think we need to get involved in the industry and the regulations. I think it, we have to have a professional body. It's important. But IOPSA is what I encourage you guys. Is. Every month we have IOPSA meetings around the country. And these four plumbers meet us. And if you want to get too involved, you want to come and meet me. I'm in the Harting region. You know, we have these, 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 these meetings and we, we have them at different suppliers. And you know what? Come up to me. Come and chat to me. Let me explain and let me explain how this thing works and how you can get involved and get part of the industry. The industry needs a lot of growth. It needs a lot of people that are talking into it. They need a lot of people that are going to be leaders. And the more and more we have these guys in the industry, I think the better our industry is going to be. And I think we need to bring that passion back into the industry. And you know what? I'm inspired by the people that are already doing that. Guys at ARPS, at PRB, all my master plumbers that I'm involved with, I promise you, are all doing great things. And we have to lift them up and say thank you to them. But we also want to say thank you to you guys for always coming on, learning, growing. But I want you now to inspire that. Get that 369 model going. Start lifting up some of them, growing the generation. And you know what? Eventually, the generation that is not even born yet will experience all the hard work that we do. Thank you, Byron. Uh, I think that's that's the end of my talk. Um, don't know if there are any questions, but um, hope I'm on time and on time. If there are any questions, let me know. All right, thank you very much, Dunk. Um, we currently don't have any questions, but ladies and gentlemen, if you do have any, please post it in the Q&A. Give it 30 seconds or so just to see if there are any. But thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, is there any last-minute words you'd like to add? Yeah, if anybody wants to get hold of me, um, they can just take down my email address. It's, they can go onto our website at www.upp.coza. Um, or they can go and, um, you know, they can get me on Duncan at UPP is my email address if they want to pop me a message. And, yeah, and I'm always open. I'm always open to guys coming in and, and learning more. And, yeah, come to our plumbers evenings, guys. Come and say hello. Get involved. And, yeah, let's bring the passion back in. There you go. All right. Thank you very much, Duncan, for joining us this morning and sharing all of this with us. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and uh, have a blessed week, everyone.